In this GoDjango screencast, we are doing a user requested video. This is going to be over using forms in our templates and the several different ways you can go about doing that. We'll start out by looking at a couple of forms using our class-based forms. We have three forms. We have simple form, cart form, and credit card form. These are common ways you can do forms. So with that, let's actually move on to our views because we need to actually have a way to display those forms to a template. So if you'll notice, you'll see two class-based views. The first one is a main view, and we're passing get context data, and we're adding instantiated forms to that. This isn't actually how you would want to do forms, but this is a way to have all three forms in a template so that we can show examples of how to use them. The second class-based view is the actual way you would want to do a form using a form view, and we're going to give it a template name a form class and a success URL. In the case of this, whenever you submit a valid form, then it will go to the success URL. If you submit an invalid form, it just goes back to itself instantiated with the data. First thing that we're going to do though is we're going to start with main view so that we can see of our we can see three quick ways to have forms on a page. So if we'll open up our template, we'll view our form template, and you'll notice right away that we have simple form dot as p. This is going to output all of our form elements in paragraph tags. Then we have cart form as table, and this is going to output our cart form as a table. Notice the opening and closing of table above that. And then finally you have credit form as ul. This outputs the form as unordered list elements. And again, notice I have UL opening of an unordered list and a closing of an unordered list. And that's it. That's the quickest way to get your form elements on the page. So if we'll actually go ahead and look at this in the browser, then you'll see we have our login form, our cart form, and our credit card form. And they're all on the page nothing really major about them. You can actually go ahead and look at some of the code for it. You'll notice at the beginning here, we have our form in a paragraph tag. And then down a little lower, we have our form in a table. And then below, we have our form as an unordered list. The form is only being put out in the LI of the list elements. And that's the quickest way to get a form to be viewable in your templates. Now that we've looked at three easy ways to display our forms, let's get a little more granular in how we want to make everything look. First thing we need to do is we need to switch to our new view so that we use our class-based view. Then we want to jump into our template, and I used form.asp as a guiding point to start. We're going to create a for loop on our form. And in our for loop, we're actually going to call the field for each form. What basically is going to happen is each field is bound to some sort of HTML. And then so if we display that like we would normally display a variable, it will output our input fields appropriately. So in this case, it would just display all of our text boxes. So we can actually see an example of this in our browser. Here we have all of our text boxes. And they kind of suck because there's no formatting or anything like that. So the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to do a little more formatting. So we're going to wrap our field in a div. And then we're also going to add a label to each of our fields. We're going to do a label tag. And then for the ID, we're going to do ID underscore and then do field.name. This is going to get the name of the field that we would give it in our class-based form. And then since our field generates a label, we're going to get the title of that label that our class-based form automatically generates for us so that we have a nice label. So next thing is let's look at it in our browser. So we refresh, we have our forms, we have our fields, and we have the nice labels for them. But unfortunately, if we try to submit it, we don't get any feedback as to what went wrong. This is easily fixed if we'll jump back into our code and we'll go down below our field and we're gonna do another for loop on our errors in field.errors. A field might have multiple errors, so we would want to return all of those appropriately. By default, it returns back a list using LIs, but in our case, we just want to list them out without any formatting at all, so we're going to do for error in field.errors and display out the error. 
So come back to our browser and we'll refresh it, put in some data and hit submit. And there we go, we have errors. We'll go ahead and fill this out a little more. You see that we get our HTML5 error in place, change that, and we only have one error left. And that's really all there is to it for that way of displaying our forms. We have one other way to look at, and this allows you to get very granular in your display. So if we'll go ahead and look at it, we'll just transform our code a little bit. And in this case, we're doing the form that we have, dot full name, dot label tag, this gets the field full name and displays out that label tag. We do form.fullname.errors and this displays out all of the errors in a list using li tags. And then you do form.fullName and this just gets the straight input field element. You can take what you learned in the last little section and you can expand these out. You can loop through errors so that you don't get it in an li format. You can do label.title to get the title back. You see you know, we're not displaying just the tag. And then just to prove the point, we'll just go ahead and we're going to add our form.card number. And then let's go ahead and look at this in the browser as well. Refresh and there we have it. Go ahead and hit submit and we have our errors as well. Notice again they're in our list format. And that's it. That's really all there is to it to displaying our forms in our browser. Basically you take everything I've shown you here and you can mix and match things to get the exact output that you want and to get everything displayed like you want them displayed. You can also go the other route of coding every single form by hand in HTML and not using any of the generated code. The key there though is to make sure that you name all of your fields appropriately based on what's in the form class. It can be as flexible or as rigid as you want it to be. There's a lot of options for your templates.